This, as you have probably gathered, is joint operations. All atomic test operations in the Pacific so far have been run under a joint task force kind of setup. Operation Ivy is using the same organizational structure as Greenhouse. Four task groups, scientific, army, navy, and air force. Members of these groups are here now, sifting and coordinating the many details of this joint operation and passing key information top sides to the command level. The Army is... Runway 2, working on his radar contact, Scott. The Army is the executive agent on this operation, just as the Air Force was on Greenhouse and the Navy on Crossroads before that. At this point in our story, it's necessary to understand the effort behind the collecting of measurement data. For what good is a test unless we can learn, can profit from the experience? Highly specialized, sometimes costly instruments help scientists bring home this vital data. An outstanding example of such specialization is the use of a helium atmosphere box by the Naval Research Laboratory. The plywood tube, looking like a train of boxcars, runs from the shot island across the causeways to a detection station on Bogan, a distance of nearly two miles. In addition to the diagnostic kind of measurement, many studies are being run on the effects expected from a high order detonation. These projects are being conducted jointly by the AEC and the Department of Defense. As always, there are many questions to be answered classical routine questions and special pertinent questions pertaining to the hydrogen device, Mike. The story of heat or thermal radiation needs continued study. The ever interesting history of neutrons will be recorded. What amounts of external neutrons are present? And what is their energy distribution? Because of the expected size of the shot, the fallout problem is being extensively analyzed. You've been here before, flag block. That's General Clarkson, the task force commander, and General Walk, chief of staff. The scientific deputy, Dr. Graves, you've already met. Captain Paul is deputy for naval operations, and General Wise, deputy for the Air Force. As you've gathered, a weather briefing is taking place. I should say another weather briefing. You've probably heard many times before how important the weather picture is in an atomic test operation. Weather can make or break a test shot. That's why you want to know up to the last moment just how you stand with the elements. The problem this time is especially acute because this entire area of the Pacific is subject to radiological fallout. And this area is inhabited by some 20,000 people. Plus, of course, the ships of this task force. That's why the RADSAFE officer works hand in glove with the weather officer. Oh, by the way, to help you understand this problem, these weathermen are covering an area larger than the United States with 10 weather aircraft and 11 fixed weather stations. To put it mildly, that's quite a territory to cover. Uh, let's listen in, shall we? Any chance of showers? Not within the next 48 hours or with the entire marshals. How about cloud cover? A few cumulus move in, but if we go off on schedule, have nothing to bother the operation. Are you satisfied from the radiological standpoint, Commander Manor? Yes, sir. The situation is ideal since the entire fallout pattern is to the north of the inhabited islands. Thank you, Joan. The time is now H minus two minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll check this fast. Minus two minutes. Why, sir? You have a grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. 
This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. Do not remove goggles or face first until 10 seconds after the first light. Minus 15 seconds. 